Hello, this is Rakesh Rao from Design Sense Software Technologies. In this video, I am going to show you the mining and geology tools in GeoTools. We are using GeoTools version 18.05 and since this is an ongoing development, you can see that every update you can see new features coming up in this module. To begin with, the geologist or engineer is going to start with a map of this kind which contains the lease boundary which is the mining area and then there are other features like contours, spot heights, ma major road, minor roads and some information. So this is where the planning starts. So we're going to start with this drawing. So if you go to the GeoTools menu under GeoTools Mining, so if you go to the GeoTools menu under Geological and Mining Tools, you have all the tools listed here. You can see some of the generic tools here and then there are some specific borehole related tools. So let us start with the first one which is called specify and plan mining lease area data. Now if you click on this, it's nothing but an interface where you set the layers. So typically you have lease boundary which in indicates where the mining lease has been obtained. Then you have major roads, minor roads, water body, high flood level, high tide level, major contours, minor contours, DTM data and so on. So you can see that all of them have been assigned default colors. You can change e by just clicking on this. the have been it's already the layer set. So I'm going to say OK. And you can see that the program is going to do a computation of certain vital statistics of the mining area. So for example, the total mining lease area is so much. The mineable area is this much. The length of major roads, length of minor roads, length of linear water bodies closed water bodies and so on. So you, set, uh, you can sort of uh, statistic information about the mining lease area from this screen. At the moment it is pretty basic but as we develop this product further we intend adding new tools. So the next step is we want to cover this area with boreholes and get the information about the coordinates and so on. So we go to the mining tools again. We go to borehole tools and I'm going to click this here which is called borehole planner across lease area. Select a closed polyline on lease boundary layer representing mineable area. So it's already asking you to select a polyline on lease boundary because we have already set this as the lease area. So I'm going to select this polyline which is by lease boundary. Now you get so many different options here. First is the borehole file. So at the end of this command it is going to create a CSV file which contains the borehole coordinates. The important things here to note are the spacing between two borehole sections which I have set it as 100 and the spacing between two boreholes in the same sections which I have set it as 50. You can also change the angle in which the borehole sections have to be drawn which in this case is 0 which is the north-south the borehole sections, profiles, borehole layers, etc. can be set here in these options here. You have an option of creating the borehole blocks. The boreholes are created as AutoCAD blocks. In this case, uh, we use dynamic blocks and I'll tell you why. You can also name the sections with alphabetic ordering. So you can give the section name and the starting number. You can also set a scale factor for the block. Click OK. So now the system is processing the entire uh, lease area and up with pull sections and further it is also going to place the borehole blocks at the specified interval. Now depending on data it may take a few seconds to one or two minutes. In this case it's quite uh, large data so it's going to take probably about a minute or so to finish. Okay, so it's done now. You can see that at the end of this processing, it has also created a CSV file called Plate 3 Geological Plans V and it has put 541 objects in the current selection. Now if you zoom in here, you can see that my entire area is now covered with borehole sections and along each section it has put the borehole blocks also. Now if you click on any one of these blocks you can see that it's a dynamic block so if I click here I can see the different visibility states or the properties of the dynamic block. Now typically when the borehole blocks are placed they are differentiated based on the quality of the ore that is likely to be obtained from the, them. So you can change the color say for example you can change it to blue 
or you can change it to positive or you can change it to negative so you can see as I change the characteristics or the visibility state of the dynamic block its color also changes now this is what comes shipped with GeoTools but you can take this block and modify it as you want it as per your properties because not everybody will want the same set of properties if you double click on this block it opens the attribute editor and if you look at the attributes there is quality depth dip strike x y z and name so name obviously is the name of the borehole so a-31 is the section and a-31-29 is the name of this borehole so likewise if you see other boreholes say for example the next borehole so this is going to be a-31-30 so the boreholes are all numbered section wise in order so that is the starting step you define your lease area and then you place your borehole sections and boreholes so next there are several tools here to edit the boreholes because not every time you may require all these boreholes exactly in the same location so there are tools to insert borehole along a section to delete boreholes and so on say for example I'm going to click this option here so select a borehole section on this layer so I'm going to select this one I will say interactive so I'm going to say I want to place a borehole somewhere here now let us look at some tools to edit the boreholes the first tool that I'm going to show you is to delete an entire section so I go to the geological mining tools boreholes delete borehole sections so let's say I don't want this entire section so I just select this and it's going to delete that section and all the boreholes associated with that sections so you can see that 28 boreholes have been deleted and one borehole sections was selected now let us look at a tool to insert the boreholes so I'm going to come back here insert borehole along a section I'm going to select this section so vertex insert mode immediate or interactive so I'm going to say interactive and I'm going to say I want to place a borehole somewhere here now you can specify at what distance from the center you want to place the borehole by entering the value or you can put ortho off and place your point wherever you want so I'm just going to click so I'm just going to pick some point here now the point has been created but the borehole has not been inserted yet in this you can go more borehole so I'm going to say exit I'm done now so you can see that the borehole has come so in this particular section you can see that I have edited and added a new borehole so in this way you can fine-tune your borehole spacings and so on depending on the actual topography once this command has been completed if you go to if you go back to the borehole planner click on the lease boundary again and click on edit here you can see that the CSV file is already generated so if I go edit you can view the CSV file so this is what the CSV file contains so the first one is borehole name so the syntax is like this a is the a is a section or the section start then a-1 a-2 a-3 are the different section names easting northing z dip angle strike angle and the depth of borehole and the quality now in this case you can see that the z is all zero this is because we have not yet interpolated the value from the underlying DTM so in this case for example we have contours here so it's possible to extract the elevations from the contours by linear interpolation now the whole idea of providing these tools in GeoTools is that we want you to be able to do your geological and mine planning to the extent possible without using advanced tools like civil 3d or minex or surpack and so on so that's why we provide probably 80 to 90 percent of the tools what these other software provides which you can use to create the mining data there are other editing tools here like for example if you go to borehole tools there are tools to make the hole smaller hole bigger or the text smaller text bigger and so on there is also a tool called import borehole data using this tool you can import 
csv files you have already created from other sources quite often you will already have csv files with you from survey data you can use that csv file and bring it here inside uh, bricscad using the tool the other tool that i want to show you is for creating the cross sectional strata so if you go to geotools mining and i'm going to draw borehole cross section data so here i require two files one is i require the strata definition file and then the strata presentation parameter file so let us look at how these files are to be created it's very simple there is a create button which allows you to create a template of this file and once you have the template all you need to do is fill in the values and input your data say for example in this case i'm going to say edit and i'm going to go to the strata section the syntax is quite simple it is followed by all our cat power and geotools commands so the first one so is the strata name so equal to so underscore description so this is a description followed by nc131 this is the hatch pattern followed by some other values which are like the rotation angle scale and so on now if you don't know what that means all you need to do is click on this explain explain this and here it tells you that the syntax is litho name litho description hatch pattern color scale and angle so it's quite easy for the first time user to understand how to use this and any of these values you can change it for example i come here and instead of 4 i want to change it to 5 the color i want to change it to 5 i just change here and then say update and then say okay and save so it's already updated so once you have these things in place i'll just uh, click on okay here there are other parameters also which you can set as you can see here pick start point of annotation it's this one so you can see that it is creating all the hatch patterns and the cross sectional data now let's zoom in here okay so that is my borehole and you can see that the cross the section name is here the borehole name is here and then you have the strata name and the depth of the strata and then you have the hatch pattern for different strata so this way you can build your entire cross sectional data for the section now so far whatever we have done the boreholes are all at an elevation of 0 which means it's not really correct these boreholes must be at the real elevation between these two contours that is done you go to geotools geological mining there is an option here called make 3d cross sections so i go to make 3d cross sections i select all the sections what this does is it is going to look at the adjacent contours and do a linear interpolation and then assign z value to the sections as well as to the boreholes you you will get the cross section which will have the exact topography so that is an overview of the geological and mining tools there are other tools also like creating 3d tunnels drawing geological patterns say for example if i click on this you can see that you can draw a geological pattern of different types between two surfaces or two edges of the cliff so for example if you click on this you can set you can adjust parameters like the length of each hatch line the color of each hatch line and so on the other command that i want to show you is the mining symbols command so if you click on that you can see that there are different folders called cars cranes geological symbols loaders mining machines and so on so for example let's choose this geological symbols you can set the insert parameter So if I view, so these are different mining symbols like boreholes with different qualities. These have been just captured from different sources and inserted here. So if you want to use any of these symbols in your drawing, it's quite easy with GeoTools because it's all available as a ready-made for you. So let's say mining machines. Click on this. So whatever symbols you require are available here you can always place your own symbols and your new and your own categories also in this section Then there are tools for strike and dip calculation there are also tools to read a minex coal reserve data file and under borehole tools 
of course many more are planned right now we are just about 6 months into developing this but in the pipeline are tools for volume volume calculation ore reserves planning and so on so i request you to keep checking this channel again and again because we will be updating the tools and releasing updated videos so the video that you're watching today is current as on 13th june 2017 but you will see an updated video very soon thank you for watching this video and do let me know if you have any questions